For a long time, the concept of vestigial organs appeared frequently in evolutionist literature as evidence of evolution. Eventually, it was silently put to rest when this was proved to be invalid. But some evolutionists still believe in it, and from time to time some will try to advance vestigial organs as important evidence of evolution. The notion of vestigial organs was first put forward a century ago. As evolutionists claim, there existed in the bodies of some creatures a number of non-functional organs. These had been inherited from previous ancestors and had gradually become vestigial from lack of use. The whole assumption is unscientific and is based entirely on insufficient knowledge. These non-functional organs were in fact organs whose functions had not yet been discovered. The list of vestigial organs that was made by the German anatomist R. Widersheim in 1895 included approximately 100 organs, including the appendix and coccyx. As science progressed, it was discovered that all of the organs in Widersheim's list in fact had very important functions. For instance, it was discovered that the appendix, which was supposed to be a vestigial organ, was in fact a lymphoid organ that fought infections in the body. This fact was made clear in 1997. Today, removal of a healthy appendix under most circumstances would be considered medical malpractice. Other bodily organs and tissues, the thymus, liver, spleen, appendix, bone marrow, and small collections of lymphatic tissue such as the tonsils in the throat are also part of the lymphatic system. They too help the body fight infection. It was also discovered that the tonsils, which were included in the same list of vestigial organs, had a significant role in protecting the throat against infections, particularly until adolescence. It was found that the coccyx at the lower end of the vertebral column supports the bones around the pelvis and is the convergence point of some small muscles and for this reason it would not be possible to sit comfortably without a coccyx. All of these were once considered to be vestigial organs. The semi-lunar fold in the eye which was referred to as a vestigial organ by Darwin has been found in fact to be in charge of cleansing and lubricating the eyeball. There was a very important logical error in the evolutionist claim regarding vestigial organs. As we have just seen, this claim was that the vestigial organs in living things were inherited from their ancestors. However, some of the alleged vestigial organs are not found in the species alleged to be the ancestors of human beings. For example, the appendix does not exist in some ape species that are said to be ancestors of man. The famous biologist H. Enoch, who challenged the theory of vestigial organs, expressed this logical error as follows. Apes possess an appendix, whereas the less immediate relatives, the lower apes, do not, but it appears again among the still lower mammals such as the opossum. How can the evolutionists account for this? Simply put, the scenario of vestigial organs put forward by evolutionists contains a number of serious logical flaws and has in any case been proven to be scientifically untrue. There exists not one inherited vestigial organ in the human body. The more we discover about God and our Savior Jesus, the more we stand in awe of His creative abilities. The more true science looks at the universe, the more evidence piles up in support of special creation. Today we are seeing the cracks in the foundation supporting Darwinian evolution. One by one the pillars are giving way to true science. Thanks for watching guys and may you all have a blessed day.